number 2020 CF 2601, the state of Florida versus Sarah Bones State. Do you catch strong behalf of the state? We can take the state. Ms. Bones, raise your right hand to be sworn, please. Please clear, affirm the testimony. You should give Shelby the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes. Ma'am, good morning. Can you please state your full name and date of birth for the record for me? Sarah Bones, 1077. I do see that we have a representative from JACS that's appearing virtually. Sir, can I get you appearance for the record as well? Yes, Your Honor. Christian Lake with the Justice Administrative Commission. Okay, very good. All right, we've got a couple of things that we're going to be addressing this morning. The first is the motions, Ms. Boone, that you had made reference the last time I saw you. Um, the court has reviewed all of those motions. Um, I've reviewed also JACS's reply, specifically their response to the motion seeking due process costs that was filed on July 30. 2024. State, have you had the opportunity to review all of Ms. Bone's motions? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Okay, all right. Ma'am, um, I want to go through each one of them um, and hear from the state, from yourself, and from JACS. We're going to start first with the, y'all can be seated, don't need to stand, thank you. The, the defendant's temporary motion for reservation of proposed cost to acquire investigator for Defendant's defense and trial dated July 18, 2024, received July 29th. That request seeks to reserve any and all costs proposed to be incurred to acquire investigator. The defendant's temporary motion for reservation of proposed costs to acquire all witnesses for defendant's defense and trial dated July 18, 2024, received July 29th, 2024. The request is to reserve any and all costs proposed to be incurred to acquire all witnesses for trial and then defendant's temporary motion for depositions to be conducted per FRCP rule 3.220 by defendant under pro se attorney title and position ordered by the judge in court dated July 18th, 2024 and received July 29, 2024. I have reviewed all of those motions. All three motions reflect to be determined or TBD with regard to the investigator, witnesses and deponents. The total amounts are to be determined. How to calculate is unknown. As to the depositions, the date are to be determined and the amount of transcripts are unknown. Um, Mr. Lake, I've reviewed your response. Do you have anything else to add, sir, with regard to those items, investigators, witnesses, or deponents? Not really, Your Honor. The only thing is if Ms. we can provide Ms. Boone a copy of our pro se packet that has, has information about including model motions, we would have to send her a copy or to send your JA a copy that you could send to give to her. That might help her in, for purposes of future motions. But as far as these are concerned, I think our response pretty much outlines what our position was to each of those, as to each of those requests. Okay, thank you, sir. If you would be so kind to send that to Ms. Berrios, we will ensure that Ms. Boone gets a copy of it. State, do you have any position with regard to those three motions that the court just identified? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right, ma'am, so previously Prison Break Investigations was already appointed to be your investigator. The JAC has no objection to authorizing $5,000 in costs for Prison Break and for $500 for obtaining case-related documents and materials on your behalf. So seeing as there's no objection, even though you were asking for a reservation, I'm going to go ahead and permit that cost to be incurred. With regard to the costs for witnesses and the depositions, you are requesting, as I identified earlier, just to reserve those costs. And as I had said earlier, the motions do not identify who the witnesses are or what the deponents are. So I'm gonna deny those motions with prejudice, but that means you can refile them and we can readdress them when you file motions in the future addressing any of those items for ensuring witnesses um, being subpoenaed or appearing for your defense at trial or for any persons that you may seek to depose. Because as of right now, I don't know who it is that you're seeking to depose based on your own motions. Do you understand the court's ruling as to those three motions and do you have any questions or do you want to add anything? I would like to add, please. Sure. Um, with your delegated due date of July 27th, would you agree that
I understand for those, so you're telling me at a later date once I have that information to revise them. I'm giving you the opportunity to refile. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. With regard to the defendant's motion for reservation of proposed cost to inquire, um, hang on. With regard to defendant's motion for reservation of proposed cost to acquire expert witnesses for the defendant's defense in trial dated July 18th, 2024 and received July 29th, 2024, Mr. Lake, anything else to add other than what is identified in your response? No, Your Honor, again, the issue here is with the exception of the mental health expert that's already been approved, there would need to be much more specific motions for these costs. We would, Ms. Boone needs to include essentially what we included in our response. And again, the model motions that we will be sending to uh, will have that information without specific information, neither us nor the court can make an informed decision on whether the requests are appropriate. Okay. Ma'am, um, the motion fails to identify any specifics it has to be determined for your expert witness or witnesses it does not identity identify the type of the witnesses um, it doesn't identify the amounts and it's difficult for me to um, identify the particular showing of need which is what's required for the appointment of that expert so again i'm going to give you the opportunity to refile in the future a motion pertaining to any specific experts identifying the specificity that JACS has requested in their response. So at this point in time, that motion is denied without prejudice and you'll have the opportunity to refile it. Lastly is the defendant's motion requesting immediate relief to the defendant by appointing effective standby counsel to aid and support in preparation of a criminal case for trial dated July 18th, 2024 and received July 29th, 2024. <clears throat> the request, ma'am, that you were seeking in that motion is to provide immediate relief to defendant by appointing effective standby counsel to aid and support in preparation of her criminal case for trial. Um, State, do you have any position with regard to Ms. Boone's request for standby counsel? No, Your Honor, other than what's already been placed on the record in the court's order. Okay. Mr. Lake, anything over and above what's in your response? <clears throat> Just briefly, Your Honor, the, the point we would make, Your Honor, is I think Ms. Boone misunderstands the role of standby counsel. Standby counsel is not co-counsel or assistant counsel to a defendant. Standby counsel is there for when, in the situation where a pro se defendant who is elected to represent herself decides at some point they want a lawyer, that allows the court to put a lawyer back into play at that point in time. In other words, it's a safety mechanism so that if a defendant who is asserted to represent themselves decides at some point they do no longer want to represent themselves, the court has a lawyer already in place so that the, so that the, so that the, the progress is not delayed. It is not an assistant or a, 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 a co-counsel. It is someone whose role is incenting not to get involved until the defendant says, I no longer want to represent myself. Ma'am, the courts have the opportunity to review the case law on this issue. There is no constitutional right to stand by counsel as decided by Paul versus State, 152 Southern 3rd, 635 at pinpoint 641 by the Florida Fourth District Court of Appeal in 2014, citing to the Florida Supreme Court case in Jones v. State, 449 Southern 2nd, 253, at pinpoint 258 from 1984. As the court has determined that you have forfeited and alternatively waived by your conduct the right to court appoint a counsel, the court is not required to appoint standby counsel. That's Brown v. State, 45 Southern 3rd, 110, at pinpoint 114 through 115. Florida First DCA 2010, citing to, again, Jones v. State by the Florida Supreme Court in 1984. There is no Sixth Amendment right to simultaneously proceeding pro se and with legal representation by the Florida Supreme Court in 2009 in Shepard v. State, 17 Southern 3rd, 275 at 279. For the reasons that the court identified in its 16-page order previously entered, your request for standby counsel is denied. Do you have any other questions, ma'am, as to the court's rulings this morning? First off, I did not forfeit my right. Uh, I did not forfeit my right. That was your judgment. 
and also I feel that um, I should have had some type of evidentiary hearing prior to your decision, um, so I could have better explained myself and you could have had a better understanding. So by you denying my standby counsel, which thank you to him for explaining to me what specifically it is, I don't want to be pro se any longer, so I didn't want to be pro se in the first place. And again, you, uh, in my opinion, unlawfully denied me, or didn't even suggest an evidentiary hearing in order for me to avoid or try to go about uh, a solution or remedy so you would understand. So I don't know if it's me either wasting your time or anybody else's time, if it's even an opportunity, or if it's just something that is denied, period. It is denied, period. With regard to an evidentiary hearing, that seems to be in the realm of a Feretta inquiry where a criminal defendant is seeking to represent themselves. And I would inquire of that person and have an evidentiary hearing as to the rights and remedies that you were forfeiting and the pros and cons of proceeding representing yourself and the benefits of being represented by counsel. Due to the Florida case law that was provided in the 16-page order, um, I, no such evidentiary hearing is required. I, I, my understanding was the hearing, the Feretta hearing, is in regards to competency as opposed to having an understanding before you take someone's right to it. Feretta pertains to a criminal defendant's seeking to represent themselves. Feretta was not applicable to your situation, and that's identified in the case law citations that were provided in the 16-page order. Yes, I understand. It was the day of that I was explained most of all of this, and as opposed to prior, so I would know what would happen or could happen. So my understanding is one thing, and then the explanation is another. So I'm just confused and feel that I should have had an opportunity prior to all of this to explain myself and to have a better understanding. So now, I, I, my belief was that the evidence or the Ferretti hearing was simply competency. So the evidence, evidentiary hearing I thought would be a collaboration of the information of why I wrote my letters in order for you to remove my right to counsel. That, in my opinion, I felt that it was a type of retaliation by the court because you did not understand or attempt to understand any of my letters that I wrote previously, which was for the intervention of the judge and or the court to avoid any of this with me sitting in front of you presently. Ma'am, as identified in my 16-page order, I listened to every audio hearing. I specifically provided dates and times and words that were specifically said at particular hearings involving yourself and prior counsel. I also made reference in the 16-page order to statements that were made in your letters. I promised you, I've read everything in the court file. I've read every single letter, and I've listened to every single audio. That decision was not made lightly, and it took a lot of time to make that determination and that decision, which explains why it was also a 16-page order. That order stands, it remains, the court's not going to revise its findings or its determination as to your forfeiture, and alternatively a waiver by virtue of the conduct identified in that order. I believe, in my opinion, the order is erroneous, and after I reviewed your 16-page order, there are quite a few incorrect entries, and some of them are, are based on perjury by the, uh, the attorneys. And by you reading and then also listening to the audio, you did not listen to me in any way, shape, or form in order for me to explain myself better so you have a, an exact understanding of the particulars of each letter for each attorney. I'm not going to revisit my prior decision. I understand. I'm just trying to make you aware that it's my opinion. You wouldn't. And like we talked about last time, ma'am, you're certainly entitled to that opinion. My judicial assistant has been in contact with the representative from the Orange County Jail, Sergeant Donald Casey, who is on his way in order to facilitate the transfer of um, the USB drives from prison break investigations. I do see that Mr. Lane is present. Um, so as soon as he gets here, we'll be able to 
address that exchange. What we can do while we're waiting for that representative to appear is address some of the things that were identified in the notice of hearing for today, which is kind of a, a scheduling conference for when we might be setting up certain deadlines. As of right now, the trial is scheduled for October 7th. The trial will be extended from two weeks to three weeks. So the trial will take place on October 7th, October 14th, and uh, the third week of October 21st. October 21st is not this division's normal trial week. However, the court has obtained coverage for that week so that should this trial proceed into a third week, we will not have to scramble in order to find coverage and that we'll be able to efficiently proceed with any evidence or testimony on that third week on October 21. Pre-trial was scheduled for September 24th at 1.30. The court typically has its regular trial case managements on that Tuesday. Due to Ms. Boone representing herself and some of the complex issues that may be involved in this case, I'm inclined to change the date of the pretrial so that we might be able to have our own pretrial uh, separate and apart from all the other cases that may be set for that same trial period. My thought would be to move it to, rather than the Tuesday the 24th, to Tuesday the 26th at 9 a.m. Is that Thursday? Yes, sir. That's Thursday. Ms. Boone, that would give you additional opportunity to prepare for trial as well. Are you amenable to changing that date to September 26th at 9 a.m.? So an additional two days? Correct. You would still have that time to prepare regardless if we had this, the hearing on September 24 or September 26th. I'm just moving it so that we don't have 50 or 60 other cases and I can focus more attention on your case specifically. Okay, all right, so pretrial will be rescheduled till September 26th at 9 a.m. One of the issues that I wanted to address was deadlines for production of the state's exhibits and the defendant's exhibits. Now, I'm mindful, Ms. Boone, that you have not um, reviewed some of the documents that may have been uh, provided. I know most recently Ms. Cashman spent 20 hours with you alone going over questionings and reviewing some of the materials. I don't know the breadth and scope of what was reviewed to you, but some of it may have been reviewed to you based on counsel's representations. State, um, I want to address with you first, because Ms. Boone hasn't reviewed the discovery yet, as to what your position is with regard to assembling or finalizing an exhibit list or your exhibits for trial. As far as providing uh, a list of the specific uh, items that the state seeks entry of? Correct. <clears throat> I do want it before pretrial. So let me just kind of lay the map for what the court's thinking. Uh, the court would have the state provide a exhibit list and a witness list by X date. Ms. Boone would have the opportunity to look at that list. We would then have a hearing where all of the exhibits would be pro shown to and provided to Ms. Boone. They would be provided on a USB thumb drive that could be utilized with a laptop at the jail. And then she could view all those exhibits here in open court. And then she would be afforded the opportunity to make an objections in writing to any exhibits at a later time by a certain date. I guess one of the concerns would be that if the state identified uh, specific items that we would seek uh, entry of, um, depending on uh, the course of the trial and the questioning, there may be other uh, items that have already been disclosed in discovery uh, that may necessitate being entered in, that would potentially not uh, be part of the, this original witness exhibit list, um, you know, items that were in the discovery, but um, if that makes sense to me. That does make sense, yeah. and I understand what you're saying. Um, and that seems to be more of a fluid situation as to what may happen at trial, right? Sure. I, 
you know, I, I don't imagine the court's intent would be for the state to just um, produce the exact witness lists that have already been uh, sent in discovery and just make a, uh, a notation of, of every item of, of evidence. The idea would be to try to pare down. That's exactly the idea. Yeah. Now, obviously, that wouldn't foreclose you if something was produced in discovery and something that would not be relevant or admissible at a certain stage of the trial, but maybe later became relevant or admissible due to something that happened or something that was said, I would not foreclose the state, nor would I foreclose Ms. Boone, from attempting to move that piece of evidence into evidence for the jury to consider. But it would be almost like a civil conference where you and opposing counsel would go over what your exhibits are prior to proceeding to trial. And I think that's important to do that so that Ms. Boone has the opportunity to view those in court so that's on the record as to what she's reviewed and then give her the opportunity to provide any objections, if any, to any of those exhibits. And again, I wouldn't foreclose you if you want to use items A, B, and C, and that's all you intend on using. I don't know what you intend on using. I don't know what evidence you have. If you only want to use and only show A, B, and C, but are saving D, E, and F for later, depending on what happens, I won't foreclose you from readdressing D, E, and F. But it's just an opportunity to address what it is you think you're going to be seeking into evidence at this time. So essentially, That's it. So um, I, I think we could accommodate that uh, if we could go uh, around September the 1st uh, for that, and then that would give her an opportunity to review that USB and lodge any objections, and then we could potentially object, address those objections, and uh, Okay, and that would be September 1 to have the evidence viewing, for lack of a better word, or for the list to be provided? For the list and the USB. Yeah, we're going to make this work for an October 7th trial date, Judge. Um, I think September 1st is probably about the right time frame to have this in court hearing um, to begin lodging those objections if she has any. My next question is. Are you expecting the physical evidence to be brought here into court by a CSI so that she can potentially open it? Um, or are we just talking about digital evidence and giving her a list of the physical items? If there's, if there's physical evidence that's sought, um, I, I, I want her to have the opportunity to review it. And we should be looking at the top of the month for September so that we can get this done. Okay, all right. Ma'am, do you understand that what it is that I'm discussing right now so that you have the opportunity to review the evidence that the state may be seeking into evidence in your trial? Is it my understanding that they will supply me with a USB drive and then I am to review it while in court? No, ma'am. So it's kind of a two-step process. So anything that's digital, that's not forensics or CSI or something that's tangible, will be provided to you on a USB drive. We also will have a hearing where all of the evidence, including any digital, electronic evidence, or any tangible evidence, CSI materials, will be shown to you in court, played to you in court, so you have the opportunity to review it here as well. Anything else will also be given to you on a, a thumb drive for you to review at your leisure based on the hours of 8 to 4 by the laptop at the Orange County Jail. And then we will have a deadline after we have this evidence viewing for you to identify in writing any objections that you have to any of the evidence that's been provided by the state. So it's not a matter of any type of confidentiality that is all done in the courtroom with everyone? It would be in the courtroom, correct. Are there going to be news cameras and photographers? That's something I need to address. I do not want, because our jury pool is going to be coming from Orange County, I have concerns about the media's presence in the evidentiary viewing. So I may have to enter an order which would prohibit media access for the purposes of that hearing due to the nature of what is being produced and reviewed so as to further prevent um, intimate details of the case being released prior to trying the case. I understand that, Judge. 
Um, Ms. Boone, not to turn the page completely, but I think it's pertinent to this discussion, has indicated through some counsel that had uh, met with her recently that she wants to talk to the state out of the jail. Um, and I was going to discuss that at the end, but perhaps to not waste the court's time, I don't know about bringing physical evidence out to the jail, but as far as the digital evidence, which will include autopsy photographs, which will include crime scene photographs, which will include videos, um, perhaps a different suggestion, especially since she has an investigator from uh, prison break, is that we identify those files uh, that we intend on introducing um, at trial so that they can review that digital evidence on their own in the jail and we're not publishing all the digital evidence here in open court. Um, that should, should allow her the opportunity to lodge any potential objections such as duplicative or any other objections she may want to raise about autopsy photos, so on and so forth, um, without exposing all of the digital media uh, to the public. As far as the physical evidence, I, the state doesn't have any real concerns um, about the media covering that. Um, she can open those exhibits, or somebody with scissors can open those exhibits for her if there are any exhibits she wish, wishes open um, in the witness box where it's concealed um, from the uh, media's eyes. Um, so those are my suggestions. And then later we can turn to her request and we can put on the record how we would go about going out to the jail and meeting her. The only concern that I have with that is I don't have a record as to what it is that she reviewed. My suggestion would be that because this is in the context of plea negotiations potentially, I would be out there, Mr. Castro would be out there, and our investigator would be out there, and we, we would record it, um, the conversation that we have, of course, and that would all be protected because it would be in the spirit of plea negotiations under the evidence code. Um, and then we can all file in writing, the state can file in writing, these are the the videos that we are going to use, these are the particular photograph numbers from the crime scene and from the autopsy photographs that we're going to use, and then we can have the defendant sign off on that as well um, so that it's documented as to what was told that she would be uh, facing at trial, and either she can review it with her investigator or she can review it with us um, being present, and then that way the digital evidence is now in the open. Okay. Ms. Boone, what are your thoughts on that? A little lost. Um, so it's an option of reviewing what the state has um, with my investigator and then be able to come with the objections and everything. That is so correct. I just, I, uh, I'm, I'm clear on having all of my evidence being in sealed bags and for me to be able to inspect them to be here in the courtroom. I don't know how the attorneys have done any of this prior, but I don't believe that it was in the courtroom. So I'm just trying to protect myself against the media. Um, I'm not sure at this point what is even suppressible that is available uh, on the internet. But at the same time though, it is my understanding that it I, I should have some right to privacy um, in reviewing my, uh, the evidence. So I didn't know if my investigator and I are able to collaborate prior and view and then come to court with everything finalized and ready to go to answer. I, I'm certainly going to give you an opportunity to meet with your investigator to address it. The question is just the method of how to do it. The state's proposal is digital. They would meet with you, identify specifically digitally what videos, what photographs they intend on utilizing, and anything that may be physical, CSI, et cetera, would be addressed here in open court. And just so the court and the defendant understands how physical evidence viewing would operate normally, the defense attorney and or her or his investigator would come out either to the sheriff's office or OPD's evidence center, whichever agency, and they come and view it, but it's done in the presence of the state, it's done in presence of law enforcement, it's done in presence of the CSI for the chain of custody. So attorneys don't get privacy when they're reviewing the physical evidence either. So that wouldn't really be any different than if she's doing it in the witness stand or wherever we deem suitable in the courtroom. I think that's the most appropriate way to have the opportunity, ma'am, to review the evidence. 
I can't release that evidence to Mr. Lane to bring to the jail for your review because of the chain of custody issues concerning some of the physical evidence. So CSI would have to be here just like an evidence viewing at the sheriff's office or elsewhere where counsel just identified. And I cannot bring you anywhere else other than here and I can't release you to anywhere else. So I think the only solution that we have is to have the evidence viewing here with regard to any of the physical evidence. Why is it that I can't be transported anywhere other than here? Because I cannot make a record anywhere else of what you saw or what was reviewed. The only opportunity for me to rate, make that record is here in court. What did prior attorneys do? That was already identified by the state. Trying to keep up with everything. What was the answer, please? So, an attorney who's doing an evidence view would come out to the law enforcement agency's evidence warehouse, for lack of a better term, and then in the presence of the state attorney, the CSI, and the lead detective, uh, they look at the package, and if they deem any particular package worthy of opening and examining, they can do that. Um, we can have the CSI bring butcher paper here so that any particular item can be opened, put on fresh butcher paper, and then changed out between exhibits so that there's no contamination. And then you can examine it. If Mr. Lane or any other representative from his organization is here, he will have the opportunity to photograph those exhibits once taken out of the packages. Um, and that's essentially how an evidence viewing is conducted. Thank you. You're welcome. And again, please, would the media be involved in that? That's a conversation that I need to see if I can exclude them from um, participation or viewing that proceeding. There are rights where the media has to view proceedings in court, but due to the sensitive nature of may what may be being discussed or viewed, I need to see if I can uh, prevent um, media access. So without doing a little bit more further dive or research in that, I don't know if I can make that call at this time. Yes, I, I have not heard of a case where the evidentiary hearing has been televised. So um, if you could please look into that, I disagree with the media being involved in that. I, I, I understand your position. And again, for the reasons that I, I stated earlier, I'm. I'm trying to prohibit as much as I can from the dissemination of the public, especially some of the exhibits that the state may be seeking to utilize. Um, we are going to go ahead and set the evidence hearing. The first is Sunday. September the 1st is a Sunday, and that is Labor Day. Uh, the court would be setting a hearing for Tuesday um, the 3rd at 9 a.m. to have the physical examination here in court. At that time, either the USB drive or the, um, after our viewing here in court, state is at your position to then have that um, meeting with Ms. Boone and her investigator and your investigator under the uh, plea negotiations or settlement discussions auspices to review all of the digital and identify what it is specifically. Um, we are happy to defer to the defendant's wishes on that, um, and I, I want to have that discussion. It seems like we're turning that discussion. Um, so I'll leave it in Ms. Boone's court. My indication from one of the attorneys that she had discussed things with said that she wanted to have a conversation with us, and so I'm offering that up. Uh, in the past, with female defendants at the Orange County Jail, there are classrooms, or at least one classroom there where we could arrange to meet. It would be a big enough room for four or five of us that would need to be there. Um, and then we can discuss that, whatever it is she wants to discuss, uh, and it would be recorded. And again, um, those portions of the conversation that are about plea negotiations and the evidence and whatnot in the trial, I believe under the evidence code would not be admissible to be used against her. Um, and I leave it to her when she wants that to happen. We can make arrangements to try and accommodate that. It should not take us very long at this point, given the age of this case, uh, to select and identify which digital uh, evidence uh, exhibits we're going to use. It's simply a matter of getting rid of duplicative and, and irrelevant photographs from the scene and the autopsy. Um, and 
believe the videos won't be too hard to uh, decide which ones to use. Um, and I don't know that there's a whole lot of other digital evidence. Okay. All right, ma'am, do you have um, a thought on when you would like this viewing to take place at one of the classrooms at the Orange County Jail under the um, concept as identified by the state? So this meeting is separate. This is prior before everything else. What I would envision to not waste anybody's time is we can go out there and have this discussion, if there is a discussion we had about plea offers. The, one of the other topics was other matters, so that's kind of ambiguous. I'm not sure what other matters are. And then also we can uh, let her know and probably provide the court in writing a list of the digital uh, evidence that we seek to introduce, and then that way, if she wants us to review those digital uh, evidence items together with her in the presence of everybody, we can do that, or we can let her with the list of the digital evidence that we plan on introducing, review that uh, as many times as she wants by herself and or with Mr. Lane. I understand, so what I'd be leaving with the digital evidence today so the state needs to assemble that. So my thought would be to have that meeting, ma'am, on the, on the 3rd of, of September. So we would have a hearing at 9 o'clock in the morning where the fiscal evidence would be reviewed here in the courtroom. As soon as that evidence was finalized and reviewed, the uh, state with their investigator, yourself with your investigator, would then meet that afternoon at the Orange County Jail to address, as the state has identified or uh, spoken about, uh, any settlement negotiations, plea offers, and under the other category to address what the um, digital exhibits are. They would provide you those on a USB drive, and they would identify for them specifically what it is that they are seeking for you to review at that point in time and have the ability to review it afterwards. We're happy to do that beforehand, and I just want clarification. By providing her the USB with all the narrowed down exhibits out of the discovery, are we providing it to Mr. Lane? How are we physically? It, it would have to be provided to Mr. Lane, okay. who would then have to provide it to um, uh, a member of the staff at the jail, the names of which I have from the um, captain at the jail as to whom, what persons are involved in the laptop process. Uh, and then once that's done, I would require Mr. Lane to identify with a filing in the court, probably in the form of an affidavit, as to when, where, and how the USB drive was received by him and when, where, how, and to whom it was delivered. Thank you. Your Honor, I feel uncomfortable with you all supplying my evidence to the jail. So I don't know if there's a way that, I don't know if you are aware, but my jail phone calls have been released and there's a lot of things that have been released from the jail. So I don't know, I do not feel protected by you all handing it to the jail. Um, I know that Ms. Julian and I previously have worked on uh, the laptop with USB drives that he has furnished himself from bringing in from the outside. So I didn't know, and I would feel more comfortable if there was a process or a procedure. I don't know whom your names are from the jail. I do know the captain, whom I spoke to the other day regarding my laptop. But I would very much... Who was that, ma'am? I'm sorry? Who was that? For which? The captain that you spoke to. Who was it? D. Giovanni. Okay. Um, there's multiple sergeants involved, and I did meet the gentleman who was supposed to be here today to pick up the USB drive. So... I don't feel comfortable, please, uh, with providing the USB drive of my evidence with things that have been leaked or released from the jail. So if there's a possibility, please, I would like for my investigator to have that and bring in with me prior. If I understand the jail's protocol, which I read to you at our last hearing, the jail will keep custody of the USB drives and release them with the laptop as well. So I don't know how I can bypass that process that they've created because the USB drives and the laptop, when it's checked out by you and when it's returned by you, is all going to be logged in their IMS system. Right. It's simply a laptop. It's a very basic laptop where 
anyone affiliated with my case has any type of digital evidence, they bring in with them from the outside. It's simply a basic laptop that we are able to utilize at the Orange County Corrections Department. That's how we have done that prior. So I don't know what it is different, and I don't know the jail protocol because no one's included me. You were provided a copy of it through the court filing, and I read it to you at the last hearing. Your understanding is different than my understanding because my contacts from the jail are telling me something different. Who? There's what are their names? There's multiple sergeants. What are their names? I'd rather not get them involved with their harassment or anything from other... Ma'am, I'm deferring to what the Orange County Jail and the captain that you identified specifically yes. as to her memorandum to the court, which was read to you at our last hearing, which was sent a copy to you by a notice of service, and it was provided by U.S. Mail. It was sent out last week. I have yet to receive anything such as... Don't worry, I have a copy to give to you this morning, just in case you have not received it. Yes, the last thing I have is your order that you provided me with um, the implementation of your USB drive. Okay, option. all right. So anything that you are speaking of in the meantime, I do not know, and it was served by process? It was served by U.S. Mail. By U.S. Mail? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I actually have three motions, if I may submit them to you. In a moment. Yes, in the process of, because the address that you are, I am guessing, sending these to is incorrect. I received your letter addressing the um, address issue. That's been remedied. So the appropriate legal mail address will be utilized. It was simply a clerical error, and that has been remedied. But regardless, I did read to you at our last hearing the protocol for the USB drive in the jail. The court is inclined to follow the Orange County Jail's protocol with regard to the USB drives. So the evidence, digital evidence, that the state seeks to admit at trial will be put on a USB drive, delivered to Mr. Lane. That will be delivered to a representative from the Orange County Jail. And Mr. Lane will thereafter file a filing with the court in the form of an affidavit identifying when he received it from the state and who he gave it to, when he gave it to, and what representative of the jail he gave it to. So it goes from the state to Mr. Lane to the jail? For the purposes of indexing it, for the purposes of their records, under the protocol, and then it will be available for your use. So if I want to see all of my evidence digitally, I need to contact someone at the jail? No, ma'am. The evidence that were in the two bankers' box that Mr. Lane digitized for you is going to be provided to the jail. That's going to be provided with the laptop to you. And that's available to you from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. every day in the protocol that I read to you at our last hearing. Yes, and I will speak to the captain just to be aware that everyone that it is in the process, because I do not feel comfortable with any of this and I do not feel protected either by the court or the jail system. So for right now, I don't know if it can be postponed or if it's something that I need to write another letter to. It, Everything takes longer in jail, so by me trying to get a hold of the captain nonetheless, um, it's going to be a feat in itself. So I want you to know if anything that I am in the process of trying to reach out to the captain, I don't know if she'll be here today or if it'll be the contact person. So in the process, I am working on speaking to the captain because I do not feel, like I said, that I am protected in any way, shape, or form by the Orange County Corrections Department with been withholding my um, evidence in any way, shape, or form. Okay. The court's going to follow the procedure as I outlined at the last hearing. <clears throat> um, so here's what we will do. We will, on Thursday, September the 3rd at 9 a.m., we'll have a hearing to review the fiscal evidence. At that time, the state will provide its exhibit list which will be filed with the court at that time, and a copy will be given to Ms. Boone of the physical and the digital evidence they are seeking to admit. After we have the in-court examination of the physical evidence, um, that afternoon there will be a meeting at the Orange County Jail between the state, its investigator, Mr. Lane, Ms. Boone, to review the digital evidence and provide uh, a USB drive with those that information. And can caveat in that order be in Unless it hasn't already been done. 
in case we do it ahead of September. Sure, if you want to do it before, the deadline to do it will be to September 3. But the end, the in-court physical examination will be at September 3. So if you all want to meet in advance of that, I won't prohibit that. Just file something in the court file identifying a notice or some document so that it identifies when that meeting took place, when the evidence viewing took place. Understood. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Ma'am, after you, we've had this hearing on September 3, and that being the deadline for the digital evidence and the viewing of the physical evidence, um, the court would then like to set a deadline for when you would provide your objections to the state's exhibits. Mindful that this will take place on September 3 and that we have pretrial set for September 26, uh, and if we need to have a hearing with regard to those objections, my thoughts would be to give you two weeks until the 17th to lodge your objections. And those would need to be provided in writing by the 17th. So that if there are objections and if we need to have a hearing on them, that hearing can be held when we have our pretrial on the 26th. That would give the state ample opportunity to prepare for any of the objections that you have. Forgive me and thank you for your patience, everyone. So on September 3rd, I will be viewing the digital and physical evidence here in the courtroom. Correct. And then later that afternoon, I would be meeting with the state and my investigator. If they don't meet with you prior to that date. The deadline for the state state's investigator, your investigator, and yourself to meet to review the digital evidence would be no later than the close of business on September 3. <clears throat> I've outlined for when I would like it done, but if the state wants to meet you in advance of that date, they can do so. Yes, please. If I may ask, please, what is your name, sir? William J. Could you spell your last name, please? J-A-Y. Don't get asked that a lot. <laughs> and what is your affiliation with the state? I am a homicide unit chief. Yes, please. And I am okay if you would like to meet prior, so less time is consuming on the day of our meeting, supposedly on the 3rd. So I assume you have availability. Should I meet with Mr. Lane to discuss his availability so we can get out there this month? Yes. Please. Then you can do that. And like I said, Mr. J, if you could follow that notice, yes, just to identify and win, um, that would be most appreciative. So, ma'am, understanding where we are with the viewing, what is September 17th for the deadline for your objections acceptable to you? Yes, and if I may please raise the point that I have a motion here um, in regards to the line in the process of working on it for the laptop. I do not have my discovery as of yet, and I do not have the laptop as of yet. I do not know what hiccups may be involved. There's a lot of hiccups with the jail already. So I'm trying to figure out when and where I'll be able to view anything. So there's a great restriction also that is being put on the laptop usage from eight to four. Um, I'm unable to utilize my time to the full extent. Also, I have a motion here to receive my hard copy evidence because when the laptops are in quotes, the laptop is in quotes, closed for the day at 4 p.m., I can therefore pick up using the hard copy evidence. I haven't had the opportunity to review the motions that you're speaking of. Neither has the state. We'll address them today. I don't have a problem doing that. I'm just not going to do it right this second because I haven't had the opportunity to review them yet. Yes, and I'm just explaining myself in the meantime, please. So you are aware of what I have already thought of and am trying to um, ease the pain of everyone uh, with me trying to figure out how to do everything and when and do it appropriately. But I just wanted you to know that by bringing that topic up, I have that to um, also be looked over. Okay. Please. 917, if that has to be changed, am I okay to do that? I'm trying to set deadlines now, ma'am. And that give, would give you two weeks to review the physical evidence. You'll be provided the digital evidence, it seems, in advance of that September 3rd deadline. And that may give you more than two weeks to review and lodge any objections. This is just for the evidence? Correct. This is only addressing any objections to the evidence that the state seeks to admit. Uh, the digital 
discovery, is any of that included in that? Yes. Okay. I'm very wary to make any type of deadlines. Well, we're setting them today. I understand. So the third is a what day? Thursday? Tuesday. So the 17th would be two weeks later, Tuesday the 17th. And that is me coming with my objections. That would be you filing your objections in writing with the court. And to the extent we would need to have a hearing on those objections, we would have them when the pretrial or trial case management conference is set at 9 a.m. the following Thursday, the 26th of September. I'm sorry. What is on the 26th? That's when we're having our pretrial or trial case management to address any last minute issues regarding trial. Okay. Forgive me. So today being August 5th, I'm supposed to expeditiously complete my case that in every way she's informed by September 26th in order to go to trial for October 7th. The dates are what the dates are. September 26th is the trial case management date, and October 7th is the trial date. So by me not even seeing my discovery yet to date, and only being restricted to a laptop from 8 to 4, and not having my hard copy evidence. You have 62 days to prepare for trial, not including today. And you're going to get your discovery today. I'm not going to answer that question. Am I supposed to? What now we're addressing, ma'am, is September 17th. Right. The deadline, which is two weeks after having the physical view of any of the physical evidence. It sounds like Mr. J is going to try to meet with you pretty promptly regarding the digital evidence. So you'll have plenty of time to review that in two weeks at a minimum or two weeks at most, rather, to lodge any objections to the physical evidence. I understand. I just don't understand how to file objections. I cannot answer that for you. That would be me providing you legal advice, which I'm prohibited from doing. All I can tell you is that if you have objections to any of the exhibits that the state may seek to move into evidence, you will have to lodge those objections by the close of business on September 17th. And those objections will have to be in writing. If we have to have a hearing on those objections, that hearing will be held on September 26th. Okay, and if I may ask, um, are these being delegated or they're, I'm being incorporated in this in order for me to be able to say yay or nay? I don't know what that means. What do you mean delegated? Are you delegating to me as you've delegated everything else in regards to taking my counsel and all of your orders? You are representing yourself for the pre reasons that the court identified in its 16-page order. It is your responsibility, as you are representing yourself and proceeding pro se, to comply with the court's orders and deadlines. So if you have objections to any of the exhibits that the state may be seeking to offer into evidence, be it digital or physical, based on your review of those, the deadline to submit those in writing would be on September 17th. So I don't have any say in it. I'm asking, I've asked you what your thoughts would be as to when. You've never provided me in a, a disagreement with, to that, with regard to that date as of yet. You've asked questions about your motions that I haven't seen yet. Your desire to have hard copies, which we addressed at the last hearing, but I'll be glad to address it again today. You have yet to I, tell me that that date's unacceptable for you, and if so, why? I wouldn't necessarily say unacceptable. I'm just uncomfortable with uh, agreeing to a date when I am pro se and have never been pro se before and do not know what I'm doing. So I just want to make sure that I do it correctly and have an understanding also if you are proposing that I go to trial within 62 days that I know what I'm going into and what I may expect. 
So I didn't know that this would just be easier on everyone else if they just delegated the date and gave me a printed copy um, with your order and whatever information you have. I don't know. I don't know either if you all are just proposing that because I'm incarcerated, just the dates are what you tell me. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know. I do not know what I'm doing. So I'm trying to learn as I go, which is why I'm grateful for everyone's patience. But at the same time, though, for me to accept this date and then not be able to meet it, what is what happens when that happens? If it should happen, I can't answer that question again. That would be me providing you legal advice as to what to do if something happens. I simply cannot answer that question. I'm not allowed to. I'm with the court, so whatever it is that you all are trying to do in order to expedite this even more than what it's being expedited, um, I'm guessing I agree with September 17th. Okay, all right. Now, ma'am, I believe that takes care of all of the deadlines with regard to the state's exhibits. Now I want to address deadlines for any exhibits or witnesses that you may be seeking. I am mindful that you will be receiving the discovery today and that um, you have not had the opportunity to review some of the items that may be um, in the discovery. So how much time would you like to provide to the court the list of exhibits that you may be seeking to enter and the list of witnesses that you may be seeking to have testify in a defense should you choose to put one on. Please understand that I do not have access to a normal phone. I don't have access to a normal phone at normal hours. So I am trying to overcome the hurdle of trying to, number one, locate any of my witnesses, and then also try to communicate with them on a payphone only telephone call that I do not have regular access to and that are limited to only 15 minutes that I have to share with 62 other inmates. That is a hurdle please, that I need for you to please take into consideration in order for me to be able to try to determine my witnesses, to determine any expert witnesses. May I ask, please, does the laptop have internet access? I'm unaware. I'm unaware if it does. To, to view any documents? I'm unaware. I can't answer the question that I don't have an answer to. I'm unaware if it has internet access. Who is it that I need to speak to in order for this? Um, we may be able to inquire of the jail representative who is appearing for the hearing this morning, and if not, um, uh, the captain may be able to provide that information, but I do not know if it has internet access. May I ask your contact names from the jail? Give us one second. Please, and also, because of the court's error of sending my um, information that you're referencing to the incorrect address, could you please provide me a copy of that also? It, what What is it that you're asked? Which, the protocol, ma'am? That was what was most recently sent. I don't know. Whatever it is, the last thing that I received from you and the court was the hand delivery of the order regarding sure. USB. I have a copy that Madam Clerk's already printed out of the protocol. Um, we will have the deputy hand deliver that to you right after. Did it? What did I do? No. Oh, I sent it to Anita. That's why. <laughs> Give me a second. I'll have Madam Clerk print that out for you right now, ma'am. Thank you. So, understanding that as of right now, you do not have hard copies, you'll be provided digital copies, and to review all this evidence, ma'am, when in time do you feel comfortable in providing the court and the state the list of your witnesses and your exhibits that you may be seeking to introduce? I'm going to go with to be determined because I just explained also, please, that I do not have access to a regular phone. I need to locate anyone. I need to do research. I don't know if I have internet access to anyone. I don't have a phone book. 
there's no way that I know how to do any of this without essentials and um, fundamental equipment in order for me to be able to provide you with those answers. I cannot promise anything because I do not know how I would be able to do any of that at this moment. I would like to leave to propose your understanding of a, a meeting that I would like to have with the captain so I can see if I can have access to a regular phone, if I can have access to an internet. Right now I have a tablet that is used for text messaging and movies and the law library that I utilize. I don't have access to the phone, I don't have access to the internet. You can certainly have those conversations with the jail representatives but ma'am, we were on notice today to address those deadlines, and I cannot set a to-be-determined deadline at this time. I understand that there's been some delays um, with regard to the discovery. As I told you at the last hearing, we're moving as expeditiously as possible to get you that, and it took some time for that process to be created. That process is going to start today. Mr. Lane's here. Representative from the Orange County Jail will be here. That handoff will take place. You'll have access to that laptop with all the information today. If the defendant's not going to make a suggestion, make the state. Sure. Uh, my suggestion would be to give her 14 days after the point that the uh, specific evidence identified by the state to be used at trials provided to her. So, for example, the physical evidence, which we, we plan on giving her the list of those physical items well in advance of September 3rd, that will just be the date that she can actually see them. But my suggestion for those physical evidence items would be September 17th and then 14 or 15 days after whichever day we get the specific list of digital evidence items to her um, would be our suggestion. Okay. Ma'am, are, are you amenable to that? That would 14 days after you've had the opportunity to review the digital evidence and 14 days after you've reviewed the physical evidence to provide your exhibit lists? I don't feel comfortable with any of this. I I don't have the same opportunities as the state or any attorneys prior. So I feel that you all are pressuring me and forcing me into these dates which I may not be able to meet or exceed. Can I add that obviously either side, if there's good cause for why a deadline wasn't met, if something comes up, then we're not prohibited either side from <coughs> complying with the rules of discovery afterwards. Um, but there would just need to be a cause shown. Do you understand that, ma'am? I do. That I'm setting these dates for now, and if either party can establish good cause why these dates should be moved. Yes, and that is why I'm trying to make everyone aware prior to all of this to understand my circumstances by being incarcerated and not having access to a phone, not having access to the internet, and not having access to many more other, like I said, basics, um, fundamental basics, which is why I'm making you all aware now, so you are aware that when the time comes, should it, why for good cause, I am stating my good cause is now, if not there are additional at that time. Ma'am, as of right now, the court is inclined to agree with the state's suggestion that 14 days after viewing the digital evidence, which will take place no later than September 3rd, sounds like it'll take place way in advance of that, you are to provide in writing your list of exhibits that you want to attempt to move into evidence, 14 days after viewing the physical evidence on September 3rd, you are to provide in writing the list of any exhibits uh, that may be physical that you intend to enter into evidence. Those dates can be extended for a uh, good cause that may be shown. Um, State, would you like the opportunity to review uh, those exhibits similar to an evidence viewing that we're having with Ms. Boone reviewing the state's exhibits, would you like a similar opportunity to review any of her exhibits? If the defense has any physical uh, evidence to uh, place in evidence, I can make those arrangements with uh, Mr. Lane. Okay, all right. Um, I will set a deadline for the review um, of September 26th. That is correct. Okay. 
I would also propose a similar date of September 17th for any of the witness lists for the defense. And Mr. Jay, would you be in a position by the 1st of September to provide any witness lists for the state? She should have the witness list in the discovery that's being provided as far as the order um, and, the, and the list of witnesses that we're going to call a trial. We will, we will get in that ahead of 9-3. Okay, all right. So the deadline for the state's production of the witness list will be September 3, no later than and September 17th for Ms. Boone. Ma'am, similar to the um, objections to any discovery, that'll have to be in writing as to who it is that you may be calling as a defense witness. And you'll have to provide that to the court in writing by September 17th. Yes, and if I may ask, please, um, what you're typing, is that for an order or for today's proceedings? It is for an order, which you will be given a copy of. It may not be able to be hand delivered to you, ma'am, because I'm going to have to move some stuff around based on my scratch notes here. But at a minimum, it would be mailed to the uh, uh, your proper address due to that clerical error. Or that clerical error that will not be an issue. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, I think that addresses all the issues um, with regard to production and hearings on any objections. Um, anything else from the state that you believe we need to address from a scheduling? concept. We're good with the scheduling concepts. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Ma'am, do you have any questions with regard to the scheduling concepts or deadlines that we've addressed this morning? Other than what I have made known to the court, I do not. Okay. Bruce, can you see if Mr. Sergeant Casey's here? He is I here. Am, Your Honor. All right, very good. Um, sir, could you come on up, please? Madam Clerk's going to go ahead and swear you in. You can stay to the podium, sir. No, just the podium, Sergeant. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> if you could raise your right hand, Madam Clerks, and go ahead and swear you in. All right, sir, good morning. Could you state your name for the record? Sergeant Donald Casey. And what's your position at the Orange County Jail? Sergeant. And what are your duties and responsibilities, sir? I'm over transportation, uh, downtown court holding, BRC courts medical security and the juvenile assessment center. Okay. Are you aware of the protocol uh, that Captain uh, Di Giovanni created with regard to Ms. Boone's use of the laptop? I am. Okay. All right. Uh, have you had the opportunity to review that protocol? I have. Okay. Mr. Lane, can you come on up here, please, sir? Sir, good morning. Could you raise your right hand? Madam Clerk is going to swear you in. All right, sir, good morning. Could you state your name for the record for me? Willie Lane. And what's your affiliation with Prison Break Investigations? I'm the owner and chief investigator. All right, sir, last time I saw you, um, I had tasked you with uh, digitizing two bankers' boxes of information. Um, and you said that you would endeavor to accomplish that task by today, understanding that you were out of town for your son's wedding. I hope you had a, a great time. Um, were you able to fulfill that task, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. How many jump drives or drives do you have? Uh, of the digitized information, there's one of those. Uh, this drive here is a copy of all digital uh, discovery that I have in my possession from this room for the court's needs if they wish to facilitate that through the it would be easier to facilitate it now through the jail than me trying to bring it in myself. That's exactly my thought. So you've shown to me, sir, a small thumb-sized USB jump drive. That USB jump drive is um, uh, the information that was contained in the two bankers' boxes, correct? Yes. And the other jump drive that was the larger of the two, uh, that jump drive is any digital information that you've made had previously by virtue of being the investigator. Yes, sir. Okay, all right, the record's gonna reflect that information is going to be hand delivered by Mr. Lane to Sergeant Casey. So Sergeant Casey, if you could please take custody of those two thumb drives. And I'm gonna ask you, sir, to comply with the terms of the protocol uh, to have those added to the laptop. It'd be available for Ms. Boone's use today once she's returned to the Orange County Jail. Do you have any questions for Mr. Casey? No, you're not. Okay, sir, thank you very much. If you can proceed with that task, I appreciate you. Thank you. 
Mr. Lane, you took custody with you, sir, as well. Well, before you leave, Sergeant Casey, State, do you have any questions for him? No, Your Honor. All right, ma'am, do you have any questions for Sergeant Casey regarding his um, compliance with the protocols provided to be by the captain of the jail? Um, Mr. Casey, could you please make known to um, Captain Dia Giovanni that if she has time at some point, as soon as possible, to please sit down with me for about a half an hour to go over quite a few things that I need to have resolved? I'll look for Complete in regards to the laptop. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Mr. Lane, when we were last here, you also had two banker's boxes. Did you bring those back with you, sir? Yes, sir. Okay, could you bring those back up? I do see it looks like the original exhibit tags are still on the top of those. Mr. Lane, did you complete and copy everything that was in both of those boxes? Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going to have Madam Clerk take uh, possession of what was pre-marked as A and B for the purposes of the June 28th hearing, and we'll hold those into evidence. Do you have any questions, Mr. J, for uh, the investigator with regard to his task? No, Your Honor, thank you. All right, ma'am, do you have any questions with regard to your investigator uh, regarding his completion of the digit to today's process? And my only question is, Mr. Lane, do you know when you would be coming to meet with me at the jail? It's going to be my intent to try to get out there at the end of the week or Thank you, sir. I appreciate you. Uh, one housekeeping thing. Yes, sir. I don't know if Mr. Lane, since he's here, would like you to sign my invoice or have Ms. Boone do it since she's pro se. I don't necessarily, I don't feel comfortable signing your invoice. I think Ms. Boone would have to sign it. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Is it okay if I hand the, it to the deputy? Okay. Deputy will have her sign it and then you can take it. Mr. Lake, is that acceptable, sir? Counselor, you're muted. Uh, yes, that would be acceptable. Yeah, if, if, if Mr. Lane, and Your Honor, in light of this, we may, it might be more appropriate for the court to go up to ten thousand for the investigator because it sounds like he's already done a lot of work. So it might make more sense instead of having to come back later. Would that change uh, the original the five thousand and five hundred, or just we would increasing five thousand to ten thousand? Five thousand to ten thousand, I think, would make sense, Your Honor, just because it sounds like it that we may, we may, based on what's already been done, and Mr. Lane may have some more to say about that, but based on what he's already done, I suspect he's probably used a large chunk of that 5,000 just doing this one task. One thing I would like to add, Your Honor. Yes, sir. In lieu of having to come back and file another motion, is uh, if JAC would agree to travel expenses and some out of county, if not, I can get that in some type of form of a writing and get it to you or to the JAC if that's acceptable. Mr. Lake? Your Honor, we'd have no problem with the court authorizing saying that a thousand dollars for travel expenses as well. All right, fine. So we'll increase it from five thousand to ten thousand for investigative costs and for travel related expenses, five hundred to one thousand. Mr. Lake, are you going to need an order for the court file with regard to those? We would, Your Honor. Okay, could you submit that? Yes, Your Honor, we will prepare the order and submit it. All right, very good. Just send it to Ms. Barrios, so who I believe you have her contact information. Yes, Your Honor. All right, very good. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Lake, thank you so much, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Judge yes, ma'am. What is his name? Please? That's Christian Lake. He is an attorney associated with the JAC, the Judicial Administrative Commission, regarding costs for indigent defendants. All right, state from a scheduling perspective or the protocol which I know I filed a notice of filing of. I'm sure you've had the opportunity to review it. Anything else we need to address from that? We're good on the scheduling, Your Honor. Thank okay, you. thank you. Ma'am, anything else we need to address regarding scheduling or the protocol other than what you've already addressed this morning? Will my investigator be present at anything for and with me? I can't speak to for or anything, but based on what we discussed today, your investigator will be there for the uh, digital review, which will take place no later than September 3rd. Okay, yes, I would like to have some type of witness from the site also. He will be there. Also. He will be there. Mr. J is going to be recording the conversation as he identified previously. Thank you. Now, ma'am, you made reference to some motions that you may have brought with you this morning. Yes, thank you. All right, if you could hand those to the deputy. Also, to the extent that the deputy has not already done so, I printed out a copy of the July 24th, 2024 protocol 
regarding your use of the laptop at the jail. And I'm going to ask um, the courtroom deputy to please hand deliver a copy of that to you. It was mailed to you. It was read to you at the last hearing. But now you have a physical copy of it, ma'am, to the extent one was not already provided to you. Oh, yes. I have not received this yet. Okay. And then also there was another printout that she was going to provide me with, which I believe was a memorandum for today's dates. I, I haven't. Uh, she being who? The captain? Um, no. I'm not sure her name. Oh, Madam Clerk, no, the only thing she's pointed out, printed out for you right now, ma'am, is that protocol. I'm going to be finalizing the order. And like I said, I may be able to finish it before we're done with the hearing, and I'll hand deliver it to you. If I cannot, it'll be mailed to you. Um, yes, I understand. It was regards to another document um, proposing the dates for today's hearing. And um, I guess it was some type of notice. That's what, please, that she was going to print out to give to me, so I have that. Okay. I did not receive that, nor did I receive this protocol list. As to um, everything that was being discussed, can you print out a copy of it for the next one? It, was, it should be in the court file. All right, ma'am, let me take a moment to review your motions. Give me a moment here. Ma'am, with regard to the refer one of your motions, the motion for defendant's immediate address correction, as I identified earlier, there was a clerical error using the general um, P.O. box as opposed to legal mail. That's been remedied. So I'm going to go ahead and grant that motion um, as that's already been remedied, but I don't have a problem granting your motion for the correct address for any legal mail. Mr. Jay, if you want to approach, sir, to review the hand-delivered motions, it is the motions for defendants' reasonable freedom and movement by allowing her to be unshackled, unhandcuffed, to function equally and comfortably while utilizing the courtroom. The second motion is the motion for defendants to lawfully receive, review, utilize the original hard copy discovery, parentheses, two boxes, hyphen A, comma B, parentheses, submitted to the court by former attorney, parentheses, S, and parentheses, on June 28, 2024, for preparation of trial in her criminal case. 
just review those, Counselor, and just let me know when you're ready to address them. Your Honor, in regards to the first motion, we need to notice the Sheriff's Office, uh, who is in charge of courtroom security. So we're not able to address that today unless they're allowed. I don't know if you're able to contact the person that's in charge of that today. Otherwise, we would need to a separate day for that motion. Okay. As far as the second motion, uh, it's completely up to the defendant. We have no standing uh, to say anything about it. If she wants to have her documentary discovery in hard copy form, that's between whoever and whoever, but not the state of Florida. Okay, all right, I appreciate that, sir. Ma'am, with regard to your request for discovery, uh, the hard copy discovery, you've advised me multiple times seeking to use a laptop. I've written correspondence from you asking for a laptop. That laptop is being provided. At the last hearing, you advised that you wanted hard copies. You've also advised me that you live in the female dormitory, you have limited to no privacy, and you have nowhere to store anything. You have a small drawer to keep personal effects, and that's it. There's nowhere, is my understanding, in communications with the captain to place this information. There's nowhere to house it. There's nowhere to store it. You do not have, by your own admission, any place to place it. Is that your understanding now? Are you asking me? No, those are just statements that I know that are in the court file that you've made. You've written letters requesting a laptop that's been provided to you. I've never... You have written letters, ma'am, specifically asking for a laptop. Do you know what the data that is? Without me going through all the correspondence, but when we have our hearing on the issue of the um, your motion for freedom and movement, well, I'll notice the sheriff and we'll try to set that up for this week so that it can be done expeditiously. Okay. We can address that at that time. But the jail has advised me they have no place to store this information, these hard copies. You've advised me you have no privacy and nowhere to place them. So I'm not saying no, but I don't know how I can facilitate this for you when you do not have a place to store it the jail does not have a place to store it. We have an entire property department for all of the inmates on the entire compound. I've been given permission also by Sergeant. Who? Um, Corporal Ward, Sergeant Dunn, Sergeant DeJesus. I um, have the understanding that I have been forced to represent myself as pro se and have temporarily given me a property bag where I can store additional case documents at my bunk. Uh, help me understand, please, for future reference, so I know how to approach. By my statements that I have made to you, were not questions were not asked in order for you to come to the conclusion that you are coming to that I did not want my hard copy. I was never formally asked by you to see if I wanted my hard copy discovery. I would believe it was the court's understanding, the judge's understanding, that it should automatically be allowed to give to me. My understanding in trying to explain to you also, so that you have an understanding, is my limited, restricted access to the laptop is from 8 to 4. I, with 62 days left in order to uh, defend myself in preparation for trial, would like to close that laptop at 4 p.m. and then pick up the discovery a uh, hard copy in the two boxes that I have. I haven't spoken to the captain yet. I just now received the protocol for the laptop. I know that you had mentioned it to me uh, the last time that we met with one another. So I, I'm confused how everyone is confused by me coming to the court with solutions and ideas and suggestions, but are being misinterpreted and mis misconstrued like my order, my letter from my attorneys and you're coming to the wrong conclusion. I'm not coming to any conclusion. The process was created, and I'm just reciting what you've said to me at prior hearings, ma'am. That's all I'm doing. You've told me you have limited space. You've told me that you share, you have no privacy, and that you have a small drawer for personal effects. This is the first time I've heard anything about you having a, a locker or some kind of bag, a property bag, um, that um, you have now have access to. That wasn't addressed at our last hearing. This is the first time I'm hearing about it. So I'm not drawing any improper conclusions as I identified for you with the process. The jail created this process. It was something that they put together. 
And as I told you, we work diligently to move forward, to get with the jail, to have this done. There's no nefariousness here. There's no undermining. There's nothing along those lines. I want you to have this information. And as I addressed at the last hearing, I could not copy it. I can't look at it. I can't look at what's in those two bankers' boxes. Ms. Berrios cannot. No one associated with my office can look at it. We had to use your investigator to do that. And what the jail has advised me is that they were not in a position to take both those bankers' boxes because of space and potential hazards. Now, if something has changed and the captain advises me that you can have those documents, I don't have a problem with you having them. But what I've been advised, as identified in that protocol, is to how and when you can have access to the information. And unfortunately, it wasn't in physical form. It was in digital form. And that was the process that the jail created. They are aware it's two bankers' boxes. They are aware of what the information is. Everything has been out in the open to address your concerns and how to facilitate getting this information to you. No one's withholding anything. No one's trying to hide the ball. My opinion differs. Um, I was never asked anything. Just like my letters to you uh, prior to you forfeiting my right to counsel, I was never asked anything in order for you to have a better understanding. Ma'am, I'm not going to revisit that. I am not. Uh, you never asked me in regards to the hard copy. Hang on. Yes. How quickly can we have an evidentiary hearing with the captain or whomever we need? My understanding is she's on vacation this week. Okay. So, which is why Sergeant Casey was here, because Captain uh, Di Giovanni is on vacation. And I cannot recall off the top of my head when she's set to return. She's set to return on the 12th. So, um, if the document, what would be the, the process? Because it's marked tagged and in evidence, so there would need to be a motion to get it released from evidence. Um, I mean, I would, I would entertain an or a tennis motion to have it released from evidence. The, the concern as, I mean, Mr. J, I, I don't, this is the first time I had the opportunity to discuss this case with you. I know I've been dealing with Mr. Cacciatore. We had a hearing, and I'm sure you're versed on this, but let me just kind of bring you up to speed. We had a hearing in June, and at that point in time, I forfeited Ms. Boone's right to an attorney. Yes. based on her conduct and alternatively a waiver. And I'm sure you've read it. Thereafter, the court endeavored to figure out how to get those two banker's boxes that Ms. Cashman had provided to the court at that hearing in Ms. Boone's possession. It took time for the jail to come up with a policy and a procedure for that to happen. I was advised by the captain that they could not take custody or possession of those two bankers' boxes because of A, storage, and B, because of the hazard. Now, if the jail's in a position to revise that by virtue of Ms. Boone identifying a property bag or something that may be available for her use, I am 100% on board. If the jail says, yeah, we can facilitate and make that happen, her getting that information. I'm just traveling with what I've been provided and the protocol that was provided to me that's been filed in the court file was not inclusive of providing her hard copies. I understand, I'm just trying to find a solution. So Same. if she moves or attends to release those two exhibits to her investigator, um, then perhaps he can try and get them released to her. And if he cannot, then it sounds like on the 12th, we can revisit this when the captain's back. I think, she, I don't know if she returns on the 12th or that's when her, um, vacation ends. Oh, it's a Monday, so I'm assuming she'll be back, but I don't want to make any affirmative statements on that. I don't have a problem. Mr. Lades had this discovery. I don't have a problem with him taking custody of it again. And if he's able to deliver it to the jail and they allow it to be released to Ms. Boone, I don't have a problem with that. I have no problem with it. I'm just traveling on what the jail has advised the court in the creation of this process. Okay. I'm just so if she wants to ori tennis, which means oral motion, um, move to release those two uh, exhibits, the state has no objection. And it sounds like if Mr. Lane can't get them to her, we'll be able to revisit this in the near time future. Yes. Just, just so that she's advised. So I don't want to ask her, but perhaps the court can ask sure. her that question. Sure. Ma'am, um, the state has recommended a position for in an attempt to get you these hard copies. Is that something that you would like the court to, would you like to um, 
follow with the state's suggestion, a suggestion and ask of that of the court orally this morning. I'm not understanding what it is that he's trying to do. May I please propose that the hard copy go to Mr. Lane and then once I have permission by the captain and whomever, he can really send it to me? Granted. No objection to our motion. Okay. Mr. Lane, thank you for staying, sir. I appreciate you. If you could come back up here, sir, and take custody of both of those bankers boxes. Um, I will have Ms. Berrios coordinate a hearing for the 13th at 845. Why not? We cannot do it the 13th because it's pre-trial. You're correct. We will have a hearing on August 14th, if necessary, on Wednesday, August 14th at 1.30, if we need to address the jail's um, position in taking hard copies if Mr. Lane's unable to have it delivered. Uh, and Mr. Lane, you had advised earlier when Ms. Boone had inquired of you as to when you might be able to go visit her, you said the end of this week or by next week. Yes, if when you go to visit her by the end of this week or next week, bring that with you and see if the jail would be in a position to take it. If they are, I'm going to ask you to file a similar notice, sir, that that information was provided to the jail on what date and to whom. Yes, okay. All right. Thank you. Um, Honor, yes, ma'am. What would the hearing be for on the 14th, then, for the jail taking? The, the hearing on the 14th, ma'am, would be if Mr. Lane is unable okay. to have the jail take physical custody of those two boxes for your review outside of the laptop, yes. we would have a hearing to address what, if any, protocols the jail may be able to utilize in you having those documents. It may be not be necessary. We're going to go ahead and set it if we need it. If we don't need it, we will not have a hearing. As of right now, the court minutes are going to reflect that what was pre-marked as A and B from the June 28th hearing is being provided to Mr. Lane. Thank you. Okay. Um, with regard to your reasonable freedom motion, I'm going to set that for this Friday. Are you? Is the state available at 8:45 on Friday? No, I will set it for you. Oh, that is the 9th, ma'am. We're available, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Berrios will coordinate with a representative from the Orange County Jail to address the reasonable freedom motion. Um, ma'am, I'm going to hand file both of these motions with Madam Clerk, okay? Thank you. All right. Is there anything else we need to address this morning, State? Not from the State. Anything else we need to address, Ms. Boone? Please bear with me. Yes, please. One moment. Uh-huh. What was the conclusion for the sensitive issues of having the media incorporated in the courtroom. I, ha I, I need to research that matter a little bit further before I can make an order that would prohibit media access. Do you know what your deadline may be or estimated? It'll be well before the 3rd. That, that deadline is set for September 3rd at 9 a.m. when we'll have that viewing. I will endeavor to get that done as, as quickly as possible. Ma'am, you also had asked for a list of the persons that Captain uh, D. Giovanni had provided. The names of the persons at the jail regarding um, the, the laptop protocol is Captain uh, Giovanni, Donald Casey, who was here this morning, Stephanie De Jesus, Sonia Robinson, Courtney Battle, and Malik Muhammad. Thank you for that. Would you be able to provide me with a hard copy? I will put that in the order that will be mailed to you, ma'am. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Um, if I may, I don't know if I'm allowed to address the state directly. Yeah, you're representing yourself, absolutely. Um, how do I go about getting a copy of my phone or utilizing my phone? Is that something that can be brought to the courtroom and during the evidentiary, the physical evidence that I might be able to utilize that? So my understanding is there was an imaging done on your phone with software called Cellbrite, and that is part of the digital discovery that has been provided to you. If you are talking about the physical device being re-examined by your own expert, um, then you would need to find and retain your own expert to do that. 
uh, without giving you legal advice or suggesting that he is the person you hire. I know that defense attorneys in this area hire somebody named Richard Connor, C-O-N-N-O-R, and then that will be between you and the AAC uh, about, and him, whether or not he wishes to work for you and at what rate, and so on and so forth. And then that examination would be done by him um, uh, with us being present if we want to be present. Yes, I have um, reviewed, I believe, two or three different thumb drives were given to me at one point, where I researched all of them extensively, also included with Mr. Lane. And it is nothing of use. It's primarily cookies and history and so forth. So that's why I don't understand um, who it is, uh, the a legal expert that can give me a mere download of my entire phone in regards to videos and pictures and contacts. I could probably supply a witness list sooner than later if I were to have accessibility to my phone in regards to my contacts. That's why I didn't know if it would be allowed to have my phone physically here in the presence of everyone, including law enforcement, to be able to physically look at my phone and go through it and to see what I can um, extract myself while here in the courtroom before trying to figure out how to uh, locate and contact a, 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 an expert to download all of that to receive. So all of that information should have been downloaded and I'm not sure what has been provided to you, but I, we will be double checking that. It and has not been provided. Yeah, your contact information, all the videos and photographs, everything on your phone uh, should have been downloaded. And what you may have reviewed is just a PDF file called the timeline, but there is additional data there and I'm, we will make sure you have that. And then when it comes time to our digital evidence <coughs> a deadline, which I hope to exceed uh, well before 9-3, um, we will have be identifying which portions of it is of your phone, if any, that we seek to introduce at trial. So it may be texts from December 2nd, 2019, whatever it is. We will identify those pages, we will identify those files, because obviously your entire phone, however many gigabytes it is, is not going to just come into evidence, because like you said, there's so much of it would be not relevant. Yes, thank you. So you all have already had access to my phone and have researched it fully? Uh, we're not going to talk about our work product. I'm telling you what, based on my experience from other phone examinations is, um, all that information should be there. And there's, it's typically presented in two different fashions. One is a large PDF, typically hundreds or thousands of pages, depending on how much you use your phone every day. And then there's a separate big digital image file that is read with what's called a UFED reader, reader. And then that is where you can go in and look at everything. Yes, sir, thank you. I've not seen any of that. We are going to make sure that that is taken care of. Yeah, that, just that as be? clarification from the court perspective, is that something that would have been provided in discovery to prior counsels? Yes. Okay. Then, ma'am, as Ms. Cashman identified, she had everything. It's already been digitized for you, and to the extent you're able to have the hard copies, it'll be provided to you. So you'll have access to all that information today when you return from the jail. Yes, thank you. I, none of it was gone over in any way, shape, or form with Ms. Cashman or any prior. So this would be a, a milestone, an epic milestone for me to be able to finally do that. So now if I don't have what I need or I'm looking for, how do I go about, I know you all can't tell me because of legal matters, but do I need to write a motion? I don't know what I need to do in order to finally get a copy mirror download of my phone. It could be brought to for physical with the other physical. So again, that is going to be something that requires an expert. Um, and then if you get a defense expert and the JAC pays for it, then we make arrangements to meet with that expert. That expert will have the opportunity to image your entire phone just as we did, and you all can work with that image. Um, and you're going to be, if you don't already on those thumb drives that Mr. Lane has, if you don't already have the full extraction and not just the PDF timeline of your phone, we're going to make sure that that is provided. Okay, so that is not able to be included in the other physical evidence that you will have to find. No, what I'm saying is there's two different ways that I see phone extractions. One is the PDF, which is what I think you're referring to, is the timeline of 
this communication, this communication, so on and so forth. And then there is the actual ginormous file that is read with a UFED program. And all that should be provided to you. Hopefully your laptop can use it. It does take some specifications on the computer to open it. In fact, we're addressing those issues at our office with our own computers. And if it doesn't work, we will cross those bridges as we get there. And all you can, I've worked with Mr. Lane before. Just let him know. Mr. Lane knows how to find me. We will work this all out and get what you need. Absolutely, yes. I am grateful for your information. Just to clarify, please, during the physical evidence of me viewing that here in the courtroom, am I not able to physically open my phone and search through it? No, because okay. it needs to be a Faraday box where radio signals don't come and go because anytime you turn on your phone, it changes the contents of its phone, of the phone. Thank you You're very welcome. much. Ma'am, do you have any other questions? Okay, so everyone is aware that I'm in the process of trying to talk to the captain and handcuffs. Okay, Your Honor? Yes, ma'am. I believe I am okay for right now. You and I do not have a direct way of communication, and I didn't know. Another big hurdle is if the laptop has internet access where I don't know if emailing or messaging or whatever, however it is that you and I can communicate. Um, rather than snail mail by me writing you a letter. I don't know when I write a letter how soon you receive it, because sometimes it's uh, days or weeks that it's uploaded to the clerk's website. Do you, do you have a general time frame of when you actually know of something? Because I, you already had my address correction, but I, I don't believe updated. Well, it's been updated now. No, I mean on the clerk's website. I can't speak to what's on the clerk's website. I know for the purposes of my records and getting information to you, that clerical error has been remedied. Um, um, do you suggest, do you have any other suggestions? If I do not have internet, would my only possibility to correspond with you be via mail? That's my understanding. And you asked when I receive things. I, I get it as soon as I get it from in the mailbox. So we check the mailbox every day, as soon as I get it, it doesn't go to the clerk, it goes directly to me, and I review it. As you saw with the motions that you made reference to at our last hearing, that you had five of them, we set those for hearing immediately. And I intend on continuing to try to do that to facilitate prompt resolution to any concerns or issues or motions that you may have. Thank you, and if I do have internet access or I'm able to uh, put on if it's not already, am I able to correspond with you via email? You cannot correspond with me directly. Uh, but you can have conversations with my um, judicial assistant to the extent that you do have access to internet. I'll make sure to include her email address and telephone number in the order uh, setting the deadlines that we addressed this morning. Yes, thank you. And for any, I'm not sure specifically which JA, but um, as soon as something is scheduled, could you all please make sure that I'm included in the certificate of service or portal? or whatever it is that I might be attached to in order to receive notices to be properly prepared? Notices have been set, ma'am. To the extent that there was a clerical issue, that's been remedied, but you have been copied on everything that's been filed with the court, including the JAC's response, <clears throat> the notice of the hearing that was set for today, and the notice of the filing of the protocol. With that, I will see you all this coming Friday at 845 to address uh, the motion regarding reasonable freedom in movement. State, anything else? No, Your Honor. All right. We'll see you all Friday. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We'll return Ms. Boone to the custody of the Orange County Jail. I'm grateful. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you.